Hello everyone. So now that the beta is over, I've decided to release a more official version of the solver. And for the time being, it'll be free to use both for commercial and non-commercial use. And this video will kind of be like a getting up and running guide, as well as an overview of the changes and additions to the solver since the beta. So before we look at the solver in Houdini, I first want to point you to my website. Vimeo is probably not the best way to notify users of updates every time I publish a new build, so I added a page to my website just for the solver. Here you can download the latest build, and at the bottom of the page here you can see the build log, which will give you details about what has changed since the last release and what new products you may need to install in order to acquire those changes. There's also an installation guide here, which will help you get up and running, and will tell you where to place all the individual files and install it in what specific directories on your operating system. There's also a support section, and you can optionally subscribe to an email list and get a notification every time I publish a new build of the solver. It won't be a development log, um, it will only be when I publish new major or minor versions of the uh, solver itself. And I'm going to leave a link to the page in the video description. So now we can get back to Fujini. Once you have all the files in the right place, you're ready to get started. And the first thing you're going to notice is that I've implemented a licensing server. So when you run the solver in the first time like this, you're going to get a little prompt and it's saying it's contacting the licensing server and you just click OK. And here in the terminal you can actually see that it's trying to acquire a license. And it's telling you exactly what it's doing. And this can take up to a minute. Then once it's acquired a license, it will create a local license file in your home directory. So if I go to my home directory here, you can see it's created this local license file. And the reason for the local license file is just so that it won't have to contact the server every single time you want to run it. And that can be a little bit annoying to have to wait every single time for it to um, connect to the server and get a license. So um, it creates a local license file that lasts a couple days and will need to be replaced every couple days, but at least you don't need to um, keep updating it every time you create a new solver, open up Houdini, or something like that. Um, if you don't have internet on your workstation, then you can still use the solver. You just need to manually download and place the license file in your home directory, the exact same place that it's placed here. And that file will need to be re-downloaded and replaced every 30 days or so. And if we look over my website under the installation guide, and here at the bottom of the page, you can find information about local licensing and uh, where to place it and things like that. So now we can go over the changes and the bug fixes. So first let me enable the solver here. Execute and see the solver started up. So the first change is to how the solver cooks. Before you could not actually jump around on the timeline however you wanted. It would only treat that as like a single um, step forward rather than like for example 1 through 12, a uh, 12 step forward um, evaluation. So now you can actually click ahead, something like frame 24, and you can see that it's actually going through and calculating all the in-between frames between the place we last cooked to the place we are cooking now. And so now it cooked from 1 to 24, and now it can cook from something like 24 up to 36. It's interesting how we take a feature like this for granted in something like DOPS, for example. Uh, someone was playing with the solver once and tried to jump ahead on the timeline, and I realized I actually need to program this in. It's not something that comes for free like you might think, actually. So the other thing you might have noticed is the uh, fact that I added sub-steps. So here I'm simulating with the sub-step 2, and if I play back, you can see that we get the whole number as well as the uh, decimal point, point 0.5 number here, indicating that we are evaluating on uh, subframes. And the solver does actually source on the subframes as well, so if you have fast-moving sources, you can actually capture all that detail as well using sub-steps now. So then one feature I updated under the hood is the advection step. It's now up to 1.2 to 1.6 times faster, um, which is great, obviously. So you'll see uh, faster advection times as well now. Uh, then lastly, there was a bug found that caused strange artifacts with collision optics that has now been fixed. It was something to do with a typo in the octree lookup steps that I was doing, um, but it's all fixed now. You don't have to worry about it. So you can use collisions and it will be uh, perfectly stable now. So that's really it. I hope you guys give it a shot. Let me know if you need help or if there's any features you want to see added or if you find any bugs. So yeah, feel free to get in touch. Thanks.